Hello lovelies, welcome back to Let's Play The Beginner's Guide. I am your guide, Roser Nessie. So let's continue even though I had to check the options. So hopefully audio quality is fine, audio levels is fine. We are going to go through the tower, which is where we left off. So, we have reached a point where um, Coda has ceased to be able to confront his issues uh, metaphorically, symbolically. Um, in the last episode, we saw that he really had to face all of his issues head on. So, after that kind of confrontation, we have reached this point. So, just as of now, it, it looks uh, just lighting-wise a, a little bit stark. We have fluorescent lighting instead of warm lighting. Oh my god, this is really loud. Alright, there we go. Um, however, even though we have gray and white lighting and fluorescent lighting, I see this strip of color and... I can't help but feel that this is just slightly rem reminiscent to um, his very, very first level, Counter-Strike, where he had those hovering uh, boxes. So, um, we're gonna... This is where I have trouble saying anything meaningful about Coda's work. Because more than anything else, the tower just feels distant. It feels like it's trying to distance itself from the world. It's no, a it. Very cold game. No, it does. Like, like, look at this. Look at the colors. Look at the angles. Look at the angles right here. Like, every everything is sharp. Sharp angles. Look at this. Vaulted ceiling. Vaulted ceiling with nothing but sharp angles. Wait a second. There's no light source here. I call shenanigans. There's no light source for this. In any case, it is fluorescent lighting. It is sharp angles. It is vaulted ceiling. And so everything seems to already look at look at the grating in front of this oh my god it's so tall look at the grating on this on this doorway it just it seems foreboding it seems almost aggressive um it feels harsh of anything else, it feels harsh. Again, no light source. We're gonna overlook that. Alright, so we're gonna go underneath the ceiling. No light source. We're gonna overlook that. More harsh angles. Look at this. Could you possibly have any more harsh angles than this? And when Davy says that this looks cold. It feels cold. I don't know how you can express that in any better way. Listen to the soundtrack. And honestly, the soundtrack, being a literary buff as I am, it really, really makes me feel, it makes me resonate with Dante's Inferno by uh, Dante Alighieri. It sounds like crying out. It sounds like suffering. It sounds like gnashing of teeth. All that kind of stuff. And actually, all all these all this vaulted imagery. This room I, actually has amazing. Okay. Well, if you look at this here, it, uh, it, it, ah! Ah! Except that all the walls of the maze are invisible. 
And then every time you touch one of the walls, there's this awful flashing and noise. So the experience is really miserable. Ah! It goes beyond not being meant to be played. It actually seems to despise the player for trying to play it at all. But I do want to show you the rest of the level. So when you're ready to continue, press enter and I'll put a bridge over the maze. The fuck? Alright, so there is an invisible maze here. And I do want to try to solve it! Alright. Gonna try to solve it here. However, these, uh, these levels here with the ramps and definitely, definitely the soundtrack. Oh my god, it's just, ah, uh, it's really reminiscent to me personally of, uh, Dante's Inferno. It, it really is, look it! Look, we have different levels here. Ah. Uh. And you know what? What's going on here makes me really, really loathe to continue. continue. So, I want to continue. I want to solve the maze. Um, I, I think I went this way this time. Ah! Alright. Ah. <sighs> but, but look at this. The ceiling is so vaulted you can't even see. There's only illumination on the levels. It's... I don't know how you could create something more intimidating than this. I mean, we have one light source. Um, one primary light source. And then... But the soundtrack, the, the ambient noise is just something of, of suffering, really. It's just crying out. And, uh, anyway, I, I, I honestly don't know how to, ah! to, um, ugh! it's just vaulted. Look at this. So, uh, in the interest of progressing, I'm going to hit space or whatever it is I'm supposed to press. All right. And this is Davy's hack to uh, circumvent the mace. But God, is this ambient noise getting to me? I don't know if it's really messing with anybody else but me, but it sounds like crying out of agony and misery. Well, to be and fair, it's not like this is the first game that's needed some modification to be playable, like the house cleaning game. You know, that one used to actually loop the cleaning chores and you just cleaned a house forever. Right. I had to cut it off so that you could exit the house and the game would actually end. No, obviously. But that game had an idea that it was actually trying to communicate. What's the deeper idea behind the invisible maze? Exactly. Exactly. And that's what we're here to try to do. No light source. In any case, the God, this ambient noise is really great against my skin. Can I jump off? Fuck all. No, I can't. It just... Argh! The soundtrack, this ambient noise is just grating against my skin. It sounds like... <sighs> agony and gnashing of teeth. Alright? So, if, if we're gonna make parallels to, uh, Dante's Inferno, fucking hell, it sounds like gnashing of teeth. No light source. We'll forgive him of that. Alright, what's this? 
What is this? The only way past this challenge is to randomly guess the six digit code. Like the invisible maze, it's frustrating to me because it's the opposite of everything else that Coda has made. It doesn't encourage thought or engagement. It doesn't ask anything of me except a lot of my time. If I could have reached him during this time, then maybe I could have asked him, but I couldn't. I still don't really understand why this is here. I'll put the code on the ground for you here, though, so that we can move on. Alright. I guess, uh... There's no real point in guessing and checking here. But I really, 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 really can't get over the fact that there are highlighted levels and staircases here. It seems like there's a descent happening. Look at it. There's a descent happening. But, um... Alright, so Coda has... Bah! Oh, I can't jump off. Coda has uh, presented another puzzle that is clearly without logical, rational solution. So it kind of reminds me of when we were in the prison phase and it said um, that, that, that Coda sent Davy like a hundred or something short little mini games uh, that were called playable games and and Davy played through every single one and there was actually nothing. Troll! Kind of a dick move. Alright, we're gonna... We're gonna... We're gonna just enter the... Uh, we're just gonna enter the solution here because obviously Davy has given this to... I, I'm sorry. Uh, obviously, Coda has given this to Davy, so he wants it to be solved. He does. He's reaching out in a way that only he knows how, and it's to the extent that all he can. And anyone who's close to him, Davy, has got to come the rest of the way. And I think it's really admirable that Davy recognizes that, that there's a friend of his that is reaching out in the only way they can, in the only way they know how, and Davy cares enough to actually be recognizing this all along the way. And this is actually maybe Coda's last most desperate effort in the only way he's emotionally capable of reaching out to another person. So he's he's presenting these challenges that can only be solved by hacking because he doesn't want to expose himself to be figured out. He wants somebody to unravel the mystery of himself. He wants somebody who can try and care enough to, to want to actually hack these games to get to the root of himself. And so, um, that's why Davy cared enough to go through all of this. Look at this. He went through all of this. He went through all of these pneumatic problems. He went through all of this in order to help somebody he cared about. Oh, balls. I meant to put this to... Alright, alright, alright. There we go. And, uh, seven. So, in order to get to Coda, 
in order to really reach him, we've got to do this. I mean, we're his only friend. We are the only person that he is reaching out to in the form of game. I can't... Can I... Can I actually... Can I actually... One fi- oh, balls. And I think this is really a great example of just being aware, just being aware of, of friends and their warning signs. All right, we hit the switch. We have some uh, staircases going forward. We're gonna continue up the staircase. No railings, which honestly, to me, feels very significant. And uh, staircase railings, it feels like... Uh, it feels like... I don't know. I don't know how to put it. If any of you uh, have words of descriptions to put to the... The fact that uh, there's no railings, please let me know because I, I just can't put it to words. Uh, it's precarious. It's dangerous. It's... <sighs> Alright, let's continue. So, uh, vaulted ceiling, sharp angles. Ah, we found out. We fell down. The switch to open this door is actually on the other side of the door, meaning that it's literally impossible to solve from this side. So even if you somehow brute forced your way through the first two challenges and you got to this point, there's actually just no way to progress. And it's scary for me, the idea of Koda cutting himself off entirely, just saying, you know, that's it, that's the end of the conversation, not giving me any way to fix the problem. I feel like a failure, I guess, when I can't fix the problem. But I can open this door for you, so let me do that. And I want to just stop for a second, and I I want to discuss that because it sounds like uh, everything that we've seen up until that point, it, it seems like Coda really declined with social anxiety and withdrawal. Um, and then he reached possibly a little bit of a homeostasis. But then after that, it seems like maybe he had flashbacks of this previous uh, social interaction with somebody that he cared about. And when he finally acknowledged that when he finally confronted that he relapsed all right he he actually relapsed to a point that he was worse off than he was before or actually i i, I wonder if he was to a point worse than he was before because he got to a point where he had to actually confront his real genuine feelings no more symbolism no more themes no more anything he literally wrote down what he was thinking so maybe in the end it was a good thing or it could have been except it totally could have been but then he fell into an isolation and uh, uh, feeling distant from everything. And that's what it feels like. Look at this. He shared this with Davy, the only person he had ever shared his games with. <sighs> and the soundtrack is really bothering me. It just sounds like agony. 
So I'm going to continue just because I wanted to stop. We have uh, more views of sharp angles. Fucking hell. So uh, what did Davy say? There's, there's no solution here. And you know what that means? It means that deep, deep down underneath it all, Coda is reaching out, but he doesn't. He was I a failure for not understanding this game? I don't know why I would be. It's not like everything needs to have a solution, but I feel it somehow. I feel like I failed, and I don't understand why. Yeah, no, I I totally feel you, Davy. Um. I, I feel like everything up until this point being unsolvable. The maze, the number, the, the doorway. I mean, can I even switch this? All right, I can close it, but everything here was made to be impossible. So it feels like Coda had such a difficult time reaching out to somebody that he made it difficult impossible for anyone to connect anyone to connect and and he gave this to Davy which meant he wanted Davy to solve this he was reaching out to Davy knowing that he was willing and capable to solve it all And we have uh, more staircases, more uh, agonizing soundtrack in the background. Wonderful. Fucking wonderful. I want it to stop. It sounds awful. It reminds me of Dante's Inferno, which is just horrible. Can I jump off the edge and end it all? No, I cannot. I can't even, I can't even jump. Fuck it all. So we've got to continue with this uh, stark lighting that doesn't appear to have any source. <laughs> oh god, let's continue. I remember, it's June of 2011. I'm playing this for the very first time. And as I'm playing, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know this person. I have no idea who this person is. It wasn't the guy I knew. It wasn't my friend. I had come to so many conclusions from looking at all of his work up to this point, and then suddenly none of them... It's okay, Davy. You're just second-guessing yourself. I mean, you... You can't just change your observation and your understanding and your analysis and your you're everything from all the games that he has sent to you and shown you and bore his soul from just based off of this don't be so hard on yourself I mean just take this in stride this is something that Coda has been going through right now I mean listen Coda has sent you everything from the beginning. He obviously wants to reach you. And then the last game that we saw was basically absolute desperation. Considering that, we can establish that this is his conclusion to that. He didn't find a healthy and uh, mentally stable answer to that. He found, th the answer he found was not healthy and it was isolation. Can you tell me that there was anything else? Isolation from this architecture. And I 
Davy, you're not a failure. You did everything that you could up until this point because this is what Coda has shared with you and as a person that cares about him, this is all you could have done. I'm loving this stone texture, by the way. I'm really loving it. Alright. Up more. Up the tower. What do you think? Up the tower, level by level. And personally, being a literary buff, um, I just... God, every single level reminds me of Dante Alighieri and uh, uh, the Inferno. And look at this, down to the very bottom, this looks like a journey. This looks like a, an, an objective that you are reaching. Maybe even the journey, level by level, that, that we, as Davy, as the player, has made from the very, very, very beginning. It's all been a culmination. It's gotten deeper and deeper. So, in the end, we gotta keep going. All of this, all of this vaulted ceiling, cold, harsh angles, is all a culmination of what we've seen from fucking a uh, whisper machine or whatever the, whatever it was called and. I had been trying to, though. That was the thing. For years, I was trying to get to know him, to understand who he actually was and, and what he stood for. I asked him so many times to please just tell me what his games mean to him. I asked him please to tell me what the three dots mean. And he wouldn't. So here is literally Davy reaching out to Coda at this point, at this point of isolation and alienation and withdrawal and just being cold towards the rest of the world, the only person that Coda has, which is Davy, is reaching out to him saying, hey, I recognize what you're doing. I want to help you. I want to help you, just tell me how. I've seen the journey that you've made from every single game that you've made. And I've seen the repetition in the three dots. And here I am, here for you. If you'll just reach out to me. And, uh, I think that there's a lot of significance for there being a fuck-all pit right here. Um, I think that it would be an amazing gameplay mechanic if you could actually jump down here. <laughs> oh, this is scary and as depressing as it would be. Vaulted ceilings, everything. Look. Just... Just so much emptiness, so many levels, as if it were different depths of Coda's mind that he wants somebody to reach out to, that he wished somebody would understand. And obviously he does. He's reached out to Davy. He sent all of this to Davy. He wants somebody to help him. And yet we're climbing the Stark Tower. Fuck all. So cold. Concrete. Marble at best. Fluorescent lighting. God damn. And it feels really painful to see this. After all the 
emotional connections that we've made with Coda. Everything we've seen from him, everything we've learned, seeing him withdraw to this point as a close friend who cares about him it's really painful I've gone through this journey with Coda from the beginning learning game development with the Counter-Strike and just changing objects and he's gotten so much better at game development to the point where he can express himself and at the very end this is what he made this is what he made and this is what he gave to Davy and it's difficult because I know Davy wants to help. I, I know that Coda is reaching out. And I know he's reaching out to Davy. And he wants somebody to be there for him. But he wants somebody to overcome all these. I just felt so strongly that if I could have connected with that if I could have somehow made his work my own, that I would finally be once and for all happy. It was that I needed to see myself in someone else. I needed to be someone other than me. But he stopped and left. And it felt somehow like I had failed. Davy? What do you mean, Davy? What do you mean? Isn't this all about Coda? <sighs> you didn't fail as long as this was about Coda, and you were trying to help him. This is different. No light sources, again. A splash of color that we haven't seen. Alright. Jesus! Look at this architecture! The lighting on the stairs, the, the, the marble or stone. Look at the sharp angles and triangular. This is... Tell me how much more perfect that Coda could have made this to to express loneliness, isolation, and distance. And Davy, you didn't mess up, all right? Look at everything that you have seen from this point, and you have seen a person that you really care about crying out to somebody that couldn't actually cry out to somebody. Alright? Look at what he's seen from Project Whisper all the way through. There's gotta be a meaning to it. There's gotta be a reason that Coda made these. And there's got to be a reason that he showed it to Davy. 
We have a message here. Music stops, dear Davy. I'm the reason that you stopped making games, aren't I? It's because of what I did. I poisoned it for you. Dear Davy, thank you for your interest in my games. I need to ask you not to speak to me anymore. Orange panel. I don't think I ever told you this, but when I took your work and I was showing it to people, it actually felt... <laughs> it felt as though I were responsible for something important and valuable. I wonder at times whether you think I'm making these games for you. Shiny floor. And the people who played them they treated me like I was important. They really listened and cared about what I had to say. Even though I was showing your work, it was... I felt good about myself. Finally, for a moment, while I had that, I liked myself. You've so infected my personal space that it's a that it's possible I did begin to plant solutions in my work somewhere hidden between games. If there was an answer, a meaning, would it make you any happier? you stop taking my games and showing them to people against my wishes? Giving them something that is not yours to give? Violating the one boundary that keeps me safe? Would you stop changing my games? Stop adding lampposts to them? Fuck. And then you stopped. And I didn't have anything left to show people. I, I just had to be with myself. And as soon as that happened, there was no feeling at all. Nothing. Less than nothing. What is that? Would you simply let them be what they are? When I am around you, I feel physically ill. You desperately need something and I cannot give it to you. I literally do not have it. Struggling to come up with new ideas is not making me depressed. Low points are just a part of the process.
The fact that you think I am frustrated or broken says more about you than it about me. I realize that this doesn't make sense to you just yet. Which is fine. You're not my problem to solve. But I do hope that one day it clicks and that you make peace with this thing you are wrestling. I'm afraid that I did something really stupid because I don't like myself. And when you finally see what I am talking about... Ah! Ah! Fuck all. Shit. Ah <laughs> And when you finally see what I'm talking about? Don't say anything. <sighs> the puzzle door? Dark smoke. The same solution it always has been. Sigh. That's why I'm releasing this collection of your work. Is because I haven't been able to find any other way to reach you. I've tried everything. And so a part of me has hope that if I put this compilation out into the world, and if I put my name on it, that maybe enough people will play it so that it'll find its way to you, so that I can tell you that I'm sorry. I know I screwed up. If I apologize to you truly and deeply, will you start making games again? Please, I need oh, to be shit. okay with myself again. And I always felt okay as long as I had your work to see myself in. I mean, is, is it is something wrong with me? Is it closing? Because I know that I did an awful thing, and I'm doing it again right now. Like I'm I'm showing people your work, the but fuck? I can't stop myself from doing it. <laughs> Sadly, I need to feel something again. Like I'm an addict. There has to be something wrong with me. <sighs> Can I apologize? What if I no. tell you what's wrong? Will that work? Will that fix it? I, I I don't know. I don't think it will. But there's nothing else that I can do. Just tell <sighs> me what you want. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please, no. start making games again. Please help me. Please give me some of whatever it is that, that makes you complete. I want whatever that wholeness is that you just summoned out of nothing. You put in your work. You were complete in some way that I never was. No! I want to know how to be a good person. I want to know how not to hate myself. Stop. Please. No! I'm fading. And no. all I want is no, to know no, that no, I'm going no. to be okay. Let me Nothing. I can't move. I can't.
more people telling me that I'm good. Always more and more. It's like a disease. I understand, Davy. We're gonna continue in the next video. See you then.